Hello, hello everybody. This is Moni with Flowers by the Bunch. So today I am going to make a large arrangement in just a glass vase container. So this is, gosh, I guess this is about a six inch in diameter. Um, it is a glass cylinder and what I've done is I filled it with fresh water and then I've taped a grid on top. So I had someone the other day ask me about taping a grid. They were struggling with getting their tape to stick. So, my suggestion is to tape your grid on your vase before you add water. A lot of times this little vase will get water on it and so um, that tape will not stick to a wet surface. So, if you will tape your grid first before you add water, that helps. Second of all, I like to always tape my grid across and then add just a little bit of tape over all of those little tabs. And that's going to secure those tabs so they won't just come up. Um, and that has helped me and I hope that will help you. So we're gonna start out with adding a little bit of foliage to our vase. So this is one of our um, holiday gift bouquets. It is from Budsy, and it's one of my favorites. Um, I like to um, I like to get these bouquets at Christmas time, and I really like them at Valentine's Day. And the reason is, is they're just so easy. It is a mixed bouquet, and it has several different varieties of foliage. And this bouquet in particular has all winter foliage or evergreen, so that's really nice. At Valentine's Day, they have eucalyptus and um, Israeli ruscus and just lots of different varieties. Another thing that's really nice about them, though, is that it's a big enough bouquet that we can very easily um, split it up and you don't have to use it all in one arrangement. So I like that, too. So I'm gonna take my greens Cut those stems at an angle and I'm just tucking them right into that grid. Now you want to try to keep your foliage from falling below that water line, so try hard to clean off any foliage on that stem so that it won't fall below that water line. The foliage tends to cause bacteria to grow and so you just try your best to keep it from getting in the water. I always like to save my little extra pieces that I pull off. They work wonderfully in small um, center pieces. So try to save those if you can, if you have a spot for them. We'll often put them in just a little short bucket and tuck them in our cooler. And then we can always go back in there, especially when we're making like a little table center piece. We can just go and grab that little bucket that has all our little scraps in it. And it works wonderfully. And it saves from wasting. All right. So I have got some evergreens tucked into this base. I'm gonna set the rest of these to the side. Next, I'm gonna come in with a piece of holly. So I was um, on the live yesterday and I was telling um, the viewers that I was out delivering flowers and one of the homes in the neighborhood where I was delivering, they had cut all of their holly bushes and put them on the side of the road. So instead of having the city pick it up, pick the trash up, I just went ahead and picked up all that holly and brought it to the flower shop because it works beautifully in floral arrangements this time of year. So I have just left it out in the cold and so it will be hardy and pretty for quite some time. These are a couple smaller stems, just setting those to the side. Next I'm going to come in with some eucalyptus. So I have some beautiful seeded eucalyptus. I like to just take it and break it into smaller pieces. Excuse me, my nose is itching. And I just tuck it all the way around this base. Now the seeded eucalyptus is also going to help um, camouflage that little tape that I put on the side. So that's always nice too. And I love different varieties of foliage. I just think 
there's something about mixed greenery that makes things look more expensive and fancier. would be like um, Lowe's often carries one really? okay. but I don't know that you will find it this time of year right, it's right. usually more of a summer type okay. um, but they usually have stuff like that okay. that's kind of interesting yeah. and let me tell you where to find it when you go in there okay. um, it's going to be like if you go into the greenhouse section yeah. it's right outside of you're gonna go indoors it's right there in that space okay. Kind of right across from all the Christmas trees and all that kind okay. of stuff. All right, good. Thank you. You're welcome. Good luck. All right, so I am just adding my mixed uke. And look how pretty that arrangement already is. It's just pretty mixed greens. Yeah, I tell you, they sure make me happy. All right. So next I'm going to start with my flowers, okay? Goodness, my nose is itching. So the flowers that I chose include white and green blooms. So I have some beautiful white hydrangeas, white spray roses, some white standard roses here, some bells of Ireland, and then I have some lisianthus, some lilies, and some stock. So I'm gonna start out with my hydrangeas. So hydrangeas are large, round, blooms that really are truly some of my very favorite blooms so what I'm gonna do is I am removing um, the foliage off that bloom I'm gonna cut that stem at an angle and I'm gonna dip him right down into some quick dip now quick dip is a hydrating solution that helps to keep these flowers hydrated so you count to about seven or so and then you tuck him right into the arrangement now the reason I'm taking the foliage off is because when water comes up the stem, the stem is like a straw, okay? It pulls that water up toward that head. You remove that foliage and that means it's just going to bypass the greenery. The water can go straight to the head instead of going directly to, um, going through the foliage first. So the, um, the, flower, the flower gets the water first. So I placed three white hydrangeas. Next I'm gonna come in with um, some beautiful white roses. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove any of the guard petals that don't look pretty. Just pop those right off. I'm going to take my florist wire. I'm pushing it right into that calyx and twisting it right around that stem. Now what this does is it just guarantees that this little head is going to stay upright. I'm going to take my floral knife, cut him at an angle, and I'm just going to nestle that beautiful white rose right down into that arrangement. Now leave as much of the pretty foliage on there as you can. Um, it's just so pretty and it's free. It helps to fill up that arrangement and it didn't cost you any money. So if you can, if you have enough room um, for the foliage not to fall below that water line, go ahead and pull, pull that foliage off. I mean, or leave it on. My words, I'm backwards. Leave the foliage on the stem if you can. Now, if it's not pretty, pull that stuff off. It's completely okay. It's not gonna hurt the flower at all. I know it seems like wiring roses is tedious and you may not like to do it. I just really like the guarantee that it's not gonna go down in an arrangement. And so that's the reason we've always wired our roses. I am not exactly sure the variety 
of these white roses, but they're beautiful. Okay, next we're gonna come in with some bales of Ireland and give this arrangement some height. So we have our pretty white roses all the way around. Let's come in with some beautiful bales of Ireland. So look how tall, long, and pretty these are. I'm pinching that tip right out of that bale, cutting that stem at an angle, and tucking it right into the center of this arrangement. Now some people like to start with their height. I do sometimes and sometimes I don't. Um, it's really just all in preference. So when working with lime flowers, you really want to work in odd numbers. Um, odd numbers just visually look better. Now, and you always want to at least do three stems. You could do four if you wanted to. At least do three stems when it comes to a long flower like this one. And it's because if you only have two stems, it looks more like antenna from a bug and you don't want your arrangement to look like a bug. So there's our pretty Bells of Ireland. Next, we're gonna come in with another line flower of white stock. White stock smells so pretty, and it's a great little addition to a pretty mixed arrangement. All right, there's our pretty white stock added. Okay, next we're going to come in with some pretty Lysianthus. Now, Lysianthus is one of my favorite blooms, and I tell you the reason is I love all these buds. I mean, tons and tons of buds, and it gives a lot of movement in an arrangement, which is really one of my favorite things, is the fact that it has all of these extra little, little buds that you can tuck in in different places. All right, so there's our Lysianthus all the way through. The next flower we have is a few little white spray roses. Again, the different sizes of the blooms is giving us a different texture. You know, just different. It really makes the arrangement more interesting to look at. I'm using a floral knife and I'm just cutting that stem at an angle. And I'm just nestling those that stem right down in to the base. Now you can see how well this arrangement is staying together. It's not loose in this vase, and the reason it's not is strictly because I added that grid. Um, quite often, when you have a vase that has an opening of six inches, that's a really wide mouth. And so it's very hard to get your flowers to stand up and to act right. And so that's where that grid comes in. That grid is holding all of those flowers into place. Now the last flower, but really um, the showstopper, I thought I would tuck in a couple stems of these beautiful white oriental lilies. Now when you think of lilies, there are two varieties. I'm sure there are more than that. But the two varieties that we often use here in our shop are the oriental or the Asiatic. So an oriental lily is often the really big lily. And it is, it usually comes in shades of pinks and whites. You think of the stargazer lily when you think of an oriental. It's just a really tall, really showy, a showy lily, okay? Um, but now these are the ones with lots of fragrance. So if you have someone who is allergic to um, the fragrant flowers, lilies or something, oriental lilies or something you wanna stay away from. Now you can see the stamens that are still down in this lily. I'm gonna go ahead and pull those out. Now this opens up and it will shed pollen into this lily. Go ahead, when you see them, when this lily pops open, go ahead and pull them out. Let me tell you why. They are going to stain that lily and they will very easily stain your clothes. So go ahead and remove that pollen from those lilies. And so um, that way then it's not gonna damage your clothes or damage the lily. So we've got our lilies in place.
Next and lastly, we are going to add a little bit more foliage. Um, and I have two different varieties that I'd like to use. I'm going to use a little bit of spiral eucalyptus. Now, spiral eucalyptus or baby blue eucalyptus, when you think of the fragrance of eucalyptus, this is the eucalyptus you think of. Um, it's sticky, it has lots of sap, but it has that eucalyptus smell. And so, um, often when you go to strip it, it's going to get your hands sticky. And you'll find that some people are allergic to the oil. Like my sister Robbie has a hard time with eucalyptus because if it'll cause her little hands to break out. Um, I had another employee, Brayden, who every time she used eucalyptus, and it doesn't matter the variety, it was going to break her hands out. And so sometimes you might have to wear gloves when handling this uke, but it's really so dressy and so pretty. So I'm just tucking that eucalyptus right down into this arrangement. It affects the artist's creativity. Does that make sense? Do you get so yeah, well, I, and so I'm just stripping off those bottom leaves there. And I love this because it kind of gives us some more height. It kind of dresses it up and gives us a little more height. And again, that texture, all that pretty texture. Okay, and then the last foliage I'm going to use is called Israeli Ruscus. Now, if you've watched our videos any lately, you've been seeing me use Israeli Ruscus, and it's painted. This is a pretty white. Um, so we get Israeli is just a really pretty foliage that comes in. Um, it's a dark green. It's a really nice foliage. But during the holiday seasons, during the fall, we got fall colors. And during Christmas, we're getting more of a Christmas color. So we have, we got in this week, white, gold, and red. Kind of a metallic red. Which, y'all, it's so pretty. And I love that it's just a little different touch of a little different color. All right, and there is our beautiful arrangement ready to be delivered. Again, the flowers that we used include green bells of Ireland, which are our tall, tall flowers here. White stock, another type of um, what I would call a line flower. We used the white hydrangeas, and you can see them tucked really deep right down into this arrangement right there. We used lisianthus, which are these little buds, all that little movement. We use standard white roses, and we use sweet little spray roses, and what else? Those are our flowers. Oh, lilies, oriental lilies, these beautiful, large oriental lilies. The foliage we used was mixed evergreens. We used seeded eucalyptus, spiral eucalyptus, or baby blue eucalyptus, and then painted Israeli ruscus. Guys, thank you so much for being here with me today. If you have any questions about how I put this together, how I gridded the base, don't worry. Please ask. We would love to answer any questions you might have. If you have not already subscribed to our channel, please be sure to hit that little subscribe button down below. And if you'll hit that little bell, it'll give you notifications for when we go live. Do me a great big favor. Give this video a thumbs up and we will see you real soon. Thanks guys.